The most radical idea in science is also the oldest. What if consciousness isn't something we have, but something we are? What if it isn't a glitch in evolution or a lucky accident of neural wiring, but the fundamental fabric of the cosmos itself? Philip Goff, a philosopher at the forefront of modern consciousness studies, argues for a bold and ancient idea, panpsychism, the view that consciousness is not a rare phenomenon that emerges from matter, but a universal property of all matter. In this view, electrons, quarks, and atoms don't just behave, they experience. Not as humans do, but in some primordial way. Goff believes this isn't just metaphysics, it's the most rational solution to the hard problem of consciousness. The mystery of how subjective experience arises from physical processes. In this video, we'll explore how Goff's cosmic panpsychism challenges materialism, bridges science and spirituality, and asks the ultimate question, is the universe already awake? To understand Goff's theory, we must begin with the problem it's trying to solve. In neuroscience and philosophy, the hard problem of consciousness refers to one thing, how physical processes in the brain create subjective experience. How does electricity produce a thought? How does a tangle of neurons give rise to the feeling of sadness, the color red, or the sound of music? No matter how deeply we map the brain, we find mechanisms, not meaning. We find correlation, but not causation. Materialism, the idea that only physical matter is real, has no good answer. It can describe the wiring, but it can't explain the spark. Goff argues that the only way to solve this problem is to flip it, to stop trying to get consciousness out of matter and start seeing consciousness as something matter already has, not in complex forms, but in its most basic elemental state. Panpsychism is the view that all matter has a mental aspect, that every particle, even an electron or quark, has some primitive form of consciousness. This doesn't mean rocks have emotions or atoms have thoughts. It means that consciousness exists on a spectrum, from the most basic level of awareness to the complex experience we associate with human minds. Just as energy and mass are fundamental properties of matter, panpsychists believe consciousness is too. This idea isn't new. It echoes ancient traditions, from the animism of indigenous cultures to the Stoics of Greece to the Vedantic belief in a universal self. But Goff brings it into the 21st century with rigorous argument. His claim is simple. If we want to explain consciousness, we can't treat it as an afterthought. We must treat it as a fundamental feature of the universe, just like space, time, or gravity. Goff is critical of materialism, not because it's false, but because it's incomplete. Materialism says that everything is made of physical particles and that consciousness somehow arises when matter reaches a certain level of complexity. But how? There's no plausible explanation for how structure becomes sensation. It's like saying that if you build a big enough calculator, it will feel sad. Goff calls this magical emergence, and he finds it intellectually bankrupt. The more we learn about physics, the more we realize it describes how matter behaves, not what it is. Physics gives us relationships, equations, fields, but it's silent about the intrinsic nature of reality. And that's where Goff sees an opening. What if the inside of matter, its intrinsic nature, is consciousness itself? What if what it feels like to be matter is experience? This is the heart of panpsychism, the idea that consciousness is not something that emerges, it's something that has always been there. Goff compares it to mass or charge, properties that every particle carries no matter how small. Why not add consciousness to the list? From this perspective, your brain doesn't generate consciousness, it organizes it. The neurons, synapses and networks don't create experience from scratch. They arrange fundamental conscious elements into a coherent field. Just as a mirror reflects light, the brain reflects experience. This doesn't mean your coffee mug is having deep thoughts, but it does mean that experience may be built into the universe at every level, waiting like potential energy to be configured into higher forms. In Goff's words, consciousness is not an illusion. It's the heart of reality. But how do tiny conscious particles become us? Full-blown beings with memory, identity, and reflection. Goff points to a concept called constitutive panpsychism. It's the idea that human consciousness is built from smaller units of proto-consciousness. 
just as molecules are built from atoms. These aren't tiny minds floating around, they are micro-subjective realities that combine to form macro-consciousness. How this combination works, what philosophers call the combination problem, is still a mystery. But Goff argues it's a better mystery than pretending consciousness doesn't exist until neurons accidentally produce it. At least panpsychism starts with what we know to be true, that consciousness exists. And instead of explaining it away, it puts it at the center of the cosmos. Not as an emergent glitch, but as the essence of being. Panpsychism doesn't just solve philosophical problems, it opens spiritual ones. If consciousness is everywhere, then the universe is not a cold, dead machine. It's a living field of experience. We are not aliens in a mute cosmos. We are participants in a cosmic mind that has been unfolding for billions of years. This idea aligns with mystical traditions across time, from Advaita Vedanta to Kabbalah, from the Sufi concept of the beloved to the hermetic axiom, as above, so below. It also mirrors indigenous worldviews where trees, rivers and stones are seen as alive. Goff doesn't claim panpsychism proves these views, but it creates a space, a bridge, where science and spirituality can speak the same language again. In a panpsychic universe, awe is not superstition. It's an appropriate response to the recognition that everything you see may in some way be aware. Ultimately, Goff's cosmic panpsychism points to a profound possibility that the universe is not a meaningless accident, but a process of self-realization. That consciousness was there at the beginning, in every fluctuation of quantum foam, in every burning star, in every molecule of water. And over time, it learned to reflect upon itself through the eyes of a bird, through the heartbeat of a deer, through the dreaming mind of a human. In this view, consciousness is not the end result of evolution. It's been guiding it all along. Your awareness is not an isolated flicker. It is the latest expression of a cosmic story billions of years in the making. And when you awaken, the universe awakens with you. You are the universe becoming aware of itself. Philip Goff's panpsychism doesn't just offer a new theory. It offers a new cosmology one in which matter and mind are not separate, one in which consciousness is not a ghost in the machine, but the machine itself is a ghost of consciousness. It dares to say you are not a speck in a lifeless void. You are the cosmos, awake and looking back at itself. If that stirs something in you, leave a comment below. Have you ever felt the presence of awareness in the world around you, not as imagination, but as truth? And if you're ready to keep exploring the mystery where science meets soul, subscribe. Because the deeper we go, the clearer it becomes. The universe is already awake, and it's been waiting for you to remember.